Hey there, welcome back. In case we haven't met yet, my name is V and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. For today's tutorial, I want to share with you a CSS trick that you can apply if you want to style the active links inside your navigation in 7.1 for both desktop and mobile. So if this is something that you want to implement in your current client project, then make sure to keep on watching to learn how to make it happen. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get started. Here I am in Squarespace 7.1 side, and as you can see, I have the home link navigation here as the active link. So right now, this is just the default that Squarespace uses to be able to sort of point to that active navigation link that we have inside the desktop menu. So what I'm going to do and the easiest way that I think we can go about this is to basically look for how Squarespace is adding that particular customization to the active links and then reuse the same selector that Squarespace is using to be able to add our own styles. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is going on in here. So inside the inspect element tool, I seem to have landed here directly on the A element of my homepage, so you can see it here. And then if we take a look at a couple of the other containers that we have surrounding this link, the previous one, so basically kind of like the parent container or like the direct parent container really of that A element, you're going to see that this one has a class of Heather Nav Active. Now, the thing is that we don't really know where that sort of border that we have at the bottom has been applied. We don't really know if it has been applied to the parent container or if it has been applied to the A element itself. So we need to take a look through all of these containers that we have in here, in this case, only these two, and take a look here on the right side to see where we can spot that particular property that has been used to be able to create that border. Now, keep in mind that there are many ways to create a border with CSS, so it may not be as as obvious as we think. So if we take a look here at the parent container, we can see that we have like white space, font size, font family, font weight, font style, letter spacing, text transform, line height. We don't really have anything in here that is creating a border. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the A element itself. If we stand over this one, we can see a couple of properties here. We can see color and these colors that have been crossed off. And then here we see background image. And we have background repeat, background size, and background position. Now, you may think that this background image is doing something else, but in this particular case in 7.1, this is what's actually creating the border for the active A elements inside our navigation. So you're going to see that if I turn here off background image, the border all of a sudden disappears here from the link. So what we're going to do here is basically reuse the snippet that Squarespace is using to be able to add that border because this is already targeting those specific active links inside the navigation. And then we're going to use this with our own properties to be able to set any styles that we want to have for our active links. So I'm going to grab this here and then I'm going to add it inside the custom CSS window. And the first thing that I'm going to do is get rid of that border because I don't want it. So I'm going to go ahead and set that background image to none. And just like that, we can get rid of that underline that we had there before. Now, another thing that we could do here is change the color of the font. So let's go ahead and try that out. I'm going to add in here color and I'm just going to use a random color. So I'm just going to set this to red. But keep in mind that if we're changing the color for these active links, we are going to have to force the value. Because if we take a look here at the snippet, you're going to see that the original color has been added under this particular selector. And the selector that Squarespace is using to add the color is a little bit different, a little bit more specific than the one that we're using currently to be able to change the color. Now, we could try to reuse this snippet and then combine it with this one. But personally, I think that this is going to be a waste of time in this particular situation, especially because the selector that Squarespace is using in here also includes the color theme. And I just don't really think that this is going to be worth it. The other way to make this a little bit more specific would be to add an ID in here. But again, I just don't think it's going to be worth it for this type of customization. So what I'm going to do in here is just go ahead and force my value by using the important rule. Now, of course, this is just two of the things that you could do here. You could also do something like, for example, change the background color if that's something that you wanted to do for your active links. So let's go ahead and give this a quick background color so that you can see what that would look like. So here we can go ahead and set this to, I don't know, like a gray or something. And then here you can see that we have a little background going on there. And then if you wanted to add a little bit of padding, you could do that too. If you want to make that a little bit bigger, of course, this also opens up the can of worms of how you're going to 
align all of this in the middle, but we're not really going to be working with this customization at the moment. So I'm not going to be tackling that right now, but it's just something that I want to show you that you can do if you want to add like additional styles to your active links. Now, another thing that we could do here very quickly regarding the font is basically either change the font family, change the font size. We can also change the font style. So for example, if I wanted to have this in like an italic style, so here I can set font style italic, and then you can see how that one looks a little bit different than the rest of the links that we have in here. So it's very obvious that that is the active link. Um, like I said, we can go ahead and maybe change the font weight, although I think that's already bold. But if we were to set this to maybe something a little bit bolder here, like 900, you can see how now that becomes a little bit thicker than the rest of the links that we have in here. And just like that, you can go ahead and add a couple of other modifications to your new active links. Now I'm really liking the way that this customization looks, but I think I'm going to change the color from red to like a different sort of like yellow color here because I think it's going to work best with the color theme that I have going on in here. And now that we're done with the regular pages, let's go ahead and move on to folder pages because I know that this is a trickier area to style. So here I have a resources folder and I'm just going to go ahead and jump onto this first page called events. Now, if I click on this page, like one of the pages inside this folder, you're going to see two things. The first one is that the link that we have up here, so the folder title that we have up here gets set as an active link and it carries the customization that we just applied for the other links on our navigation. However, the page itself, the one that we have selected inside the folder still carries the same sort of default style that Squarespace 7.1 gives it. So what we're going to do now is look at how Squarespace is targeting these other type of links. And then we're going to grab the selector as well. And we're going to apply the same customization to it. So let's go ahead and take a look through the inspect element tool. And then here you can see that I landed directly on this span element. And then if we take a look here, this is wrapped within an A element. And then if we take a look up here, this one is sort of like another container that we have inside the folder that's called Heather Nap folder item. And then if we take it one step back, then you can see how this is the container that is holding pretty much all of the links that we have inside that folder content container. So like I said before, and like we did before, what we're going to do here is look for that particular style that has been applied to the element to see how the element is actually being targeted so that one, we can remove that border or the underline that those links carry. And two, we can have the exact selector that we can use to be able to target active links and nothing else within the folder. So let's go ahead and take a look. So starting here from the parent container, here we can see that we have line height and display block. We don't really have much else in here. All of these styles down here are just coming from a different container. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So here the A element is carrying the color of the font. And then we can see how we have text decoration, but this one is set to none. So you can notice here that this is not really setting the border for that active link inside the folder because this one is set to none. We have back fix visibility, padding, display block, cursor. We have a couple of properties here. Again, a lot of other properties are coming from inherited um, just styles. So let's go ahead and move on. And then here, the span element itself is the one that is carrying that background image, the same type of um, sort of underlying method that we saw for the other links. So what we can do here is go ahead and grab this selector because we already know that this is targeting specifically that active link within folders. And then we can go ahead and even group this with our previous selector in here if we want to apply the same styles, of course, because if you want to do things differently, then you can go ahead and create a separate snippet and then style those active links within the folder a little bit differently. So you can set like a different color or a different font. You can just change things around if you wanted to, but I'm going to keep the same style for all active links, regardless of where they are. So I'm going to go ahead and just group both selectors by adding a comma here, and then I'm just going to paste in the new selector. And by doing that, we're going to see that now that active link that we have within the navigation here with that and within the folder, you can see how it's styled the same way as the one that we have up here. And now if I go here into a regular page, you can see how we have just that active link set there. And then again, here, regular page, 
we have the active link there set to yellow and italics. And then once again, if I go into any of these pages in here, then you can see how that style changes. And now we have that sort of yellow italics thing style going on. Okay, so next let's go ahead and save this and take a look at mobile because on mobile things change a little bit. So here, if we take a look, you're going to see that the resources folder down here and then here the events page, which is the one that we're standing on, both carry the same style that we previously removed from the desktop navigation. The thing is that the links here in the mobile navigation 7.1 have different classes and Squarespace is probably targeting them differently. So what we're going to do is exactly the same thing as we did before. We're going to look for that particular property that Squarespace is already using to style the active links. And we're going to rely on the snippet or the selector that Squarespace is currently using to do that to be able to set our own styles. So let's go ahead and start with the folder and then we can move on to the regular pages if we need to. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to click here on inspect. And then once again, here, you can see how I landed on the A element. And then if we take a look here, this previous container is also holding that navigation link. So we can also inspect that one. And then if I open this one up, you can see that we have another one called Heather menu nav item content. And then if I open that one up, we can see a couple of others in here that we can also check out. Let's go ahead and start with the one that we landed on. So this one called um, it's just an A element and it's called, it doesn't really have classes, but anyway, this A element. So here on the right side, we can see color, position, display, margin, transition, opacity, font size. All right. So there's nothing here that is creating that underline. So this is not really the element that is being styled when we have this turn as an active link. So let's take a look. Uh, let's go ahead and go up first and then maybe move down. So here looking up, we can see a couple of other properties, but again, nothing really re referring to nothing like borders or the background image that we previously saw or text decoration, nothing like that. So let's go ahead and move on further in the um, element here. And then here, if we stand on this div that is directly inside the A element, we can see on the right side that there is the background image property being set. So this is basically what is creating the border. And just in case you're not sure if that's what's creating the border, you can just go ahead and disable that. And that is going to show you if that's the thing that is actually creating the border. So let's go ahead and grab this snippet in here or this selector that we have here. And you can see how this one is kind of weird. So it's using the is selector and it's targeting the area current page attribute and value sort of combo in here. And then it's also targeting here the area current true um, attribute here, attribute and value, and then the Heather menu nav item content. So it doesn't really matter what it says right now. The important part is that this is what Squarespace is using to be able to style the active link. So we're not really going to dive into how this selector has been created or what it means or where that information is coming from. We're just going to go ahead and reuse it. So let's go ahead and add that down here. And of course, if you wanted to add the same styles as before, you could go ahead and include the selector with the previous ones. I'd rather keep it separate just in case I want to style things differently for mobile and for desktop in the future. But again, you can put those things together too if you wanted to. Now I'm going to repeat the same thing as before. I'm going to set here the background image to none and then that gets rid of that underline there. And then if I click over, you can see how this one also gets rid of the events one. And then I'm going to go ahead and set the color to this little value here. There we go. Now, in this case, you can see how I don't really need the important rule because apparently the selector is specific enough to be able to change the color of the font. So that's great. And then I'm going to set the font style as well. So font style, let's set this to italic like that. Now we have resources and events all styled in italics. And I think I'm actually going to leave it like that just to make it slightly different than the desktop look that I have. Now, if I click on a different page that is not inside a folder, let's go ahead and check out if we need to make any modifications to the selector to see if we need to add that too. Okay, so apparently this selector that we're using is also targeting regular pages in here, which again, you can see how it's different from how the desktop links work. Um, but yeah, apparently this is already targeting everything that we need to target here, all of the active links. So we have everything working correctly here. And then once again, if we check out the folder, we can see how everything is styled, whether we're dealing with the actual folder title or the page inside the folder itself that is set to the active link and the navigation.
All right, my friend, and that's everything that I have for you today. I really hope that this quick CSS trick helped you out and that you're now able to style the active links inside the navigation in 7.1, whether you're working with the desktop or the mobile layout. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future content, and I will see you next time.